He was the only son of the first German emperor and became the next one after the death of his father in early 1888. The man we are talking about today is Frederick William Nicholas Charles, who would later become known as Frederick III, King of Prussia and German Emperor. Unusual for his time, Frederick had liberal and modern views on ruling the country. Sadly, he never had the chance to carry out his plans as he died after reigning for only 99 days, leaving the throne to his eldest son, Wilhelm. Wilhelm II reigned for the next 30 years until he was forced to abdicate at the end of the First World War. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to mention that I now also have a Patreon site where you can further support my work if you like to do so. There will be a link in the description box. Frederick was born on October 18, 1831, as the son of the then Prince Wilhelm and his wife, Princess Augusta of Saxe Weimar Eisenach. His mother grew up in Weimar, which gave his citizens greater participation in politics while limiting the power of the rulers through a constitution. Augusta thus had liberal views which she gave forward to her son. Frederick was fluent in English and French and was described as a talented student. He studied history, geography, physics, music and religion with his private tutor. When Frederick turned 18, it was expected that he would pursue a military education, but his mother and also Frederick himself insisted on receiving a classical education. This meant that Frederick from 1849 on attended the classes at the University of Bonn. There he studied history, law and governance, and public policy. Through his education, his liberal beliefs were further strengthened. Over in the United Kingdom around 1851, Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, were already making plans to marry off their eldest daughter, also named Victoria, to Frederick. Frederick's father, Wilhelm, was not amazed by these plans, as he rather preferred a Russian Grand Duchess as his daughter-in-law. Frederick's mother favored the match right away and sent her son to Britain in 1851, under the pretext of visiting the Grand Exhibition. But really, she hoped that the liberalism and the advanced industrial revolution would have a positive impact on her son. And so, Frederick traveled to London, where Prince Albert received him. But it was young Victoria who showed him around the exhibition in perfect German, while he himself was not yet fluent in English and only knew a few words. Victoria left a huge impression on him, although she was only 11 at that time. The visit turned out to be a huge success as Victoria and Frederick exchanged letters frequently from then on. Frederick proposed to Victoria in 1855 when she was only 14 years old and the engagement was made official two years later. The wedding took place in 1858 and proved to be a great match as Victoria shared Frederick's liberal views. Together they had eight children. Their eldest son, Wilhelm, would later succeed his father as Wilhelm II. One of their daughters, Sophia, married Constantine I, King of the Hellenes, and thus became Queen Consort of the Hellenes. Their youngest daughter, named Margaret, married Prince Frederick Charles of Hesse, who in October 1918 was elected King of Finland. However, after a brief reign of only two months, Prince Frederick Charles renounced the throne. Two of Frederick's and Victoria's sons did not survive to adulthood. Sigismund died at 21 months of meningitis and was the first of Queen Victoria's grandchildren to die. Their other son, Valdemar, died aged 11 of diphtheria. Frederick's father became King of Prussia as Wilhelm I on January 2, 1861, and Frederick was made Crown Prince. Wilhelm I appointed Otto von Bismarck, who shared his conservative views as minister-president in 1862. Frederick did not get along well with Bismarck and was thus excluded from the state affairs for the rest of his father's reign. From then on, Frederick was only allowed a few minor official duties like representing his father at weddings and celebrations. Frederick fought in several wars during this time as he saw it as a chance to prove himself as he had no political power anymore. Most notably, he fought in the Second Schleswig War which would later lead to the Austro-Prussian War. When war with Austria broke out, he accepted command over one army. Although he despised war and thought of it to be the wrong way to negotiate, he turned out to be a great military leader, for which he was also praised for by his people. By the end of the Austro-Prussian War, Frederick wrote to his dear wife, 
I hope this would be the last war I have to fight. It would only take four years for these hopes to be destroyed by the Franco-Prussian War which broke out in 1870. Frederick once again proved to be a great military leader. You would often see the crown prince visiting the wounded soldiers to whom he expressed gratefulness for their service. On one of these occasions Frederick stated to two journalists, I do not like war, gentlemen. If I shall reign, I will never make it. Following Prussia's victory in the war, the German states were united into the German Empire and Frederick thus became crown prince to the German Empire, with his father being the new emperor. Now being the heir to an empire did not change the situation Frederick was in. His own father Wilhelm I and his now chancellor Otto von Bismarck still distrusted him and his liberal attitudes. For the next few years Frederick devoted his time towards charitable works. After a failed assassination attempt on Wilhelm I, Frederick briefly took over his tasks but was soon relegated to the sidelines once again. This incident and his lack of influence affected him deeply, even causing him to contemplate suicide. It followed a time of anti-Semitic movements against Jews in Germany, which was led by an historian named Heinrich von Treitschke and the Count Chaplain Adolf Stöcker. Frederick and Victoria both despised the movement, calling it a disgraceful attack towards a different faith. In one speech Frederick gave, he denounced the movement as a shameful blot on our time and added that he was ashamed of the agitation against Jews. To show their support towards the Jewish people, the crown prince and princess twice attended the synagogue service. Within the conservative circles, Frederick was widely criticized for his actions in support of the Jewish. Among the critics was also his son, the future Wilhelm II, who called his father a weak, cowardly man controlled by his British wife and the Jews. On March 9, 1888, Wilhelm I died and Frederick became the next German emperor and next king of Prussia. He received the news while he was staying in Italy. That same day he wrote in his diary, And so I have ascended the throne of my forefathers and of the German Kaiser. God help me fulfill my duties and for the weal of my fatherland in both the narrower and the wider sense. Everything could go uphill from now on and Frederick could bring in his liberal views, if there wasn't the fact that the new emperor was incurably ill. You see, Frederick spent the previous year trying to recover his health from his years of heavy smoking. The symptoms started in early 1887 with a hoarse throat that was so bad that Frederick could hardly say a word. The hoarseness continued until a thickening of the mucous membrane over the vocal cords was diagnosed. A few unsuccessful procedures followed in which it was tried to remove the thickening. Frederick was sent to the spa of Bad Ems where he tried to cure by drinking and gargling the mineral waters and inhaling the fresh air. But this treatment also proved to be unsuccessful as Frederick was suffering from laryngeal cancer, but at that point he did not know what he was suffering from. It was not until May of that year when Frederick's doctor made the sad diagnosis. A surgery was set to take place in Berlin on May 20th, 1887, but one of his doctors recommended a biopsy of the growth before undertaking the complicated surgery. A biopsy was taken and sent to a distinguished pathologist named Rudolf Rukov. Rukov, despite making several separate analyses, was unable to detect any cancerous cells and the surgery was cancelled, despite Frederick's other two doctors demanding the procedure. The doctor that made the to this day controversial decision, Morel Mackenzie, assured Frederick that he would recover in a few months. On a visit to London the following month, Frederick nevertheless chose to let the growth be removed by Mackenzie. In a follow-up examination in August 1887, the growth had reappeared. This should now have been the definite proof that the growth was cancer. But in yet another examination by Mackenzie, there were no signs of a recurrent growth, despite Frederick frequently mentioning that he had a constant feeling of something not being right inside. On advice of Mackenzie, Frederick spent the following time on the Italian Riviera. With no sign of improvement, yet another specialist named Max Joseph Ertl was consulted. Ertl urged a drastic and thorough surgery on Frederick's throat. 
Mackenzie traveled to Italy to re-examine Frederick and just advised him to move to Venice for the colder months. With no improvement in sight, Mackenzie slowly started getting increasingly concerned about the health of Frederick. Mackenzie forbade Frederick from speaking and it seemed to help at first. But by the end of October 1887 his health abruptly deteriorated. A few weeks later a new grove was found and Frederick, who at that point could barely speak anymore, was given less than a year to live. Upon being informed, Frederick bursted into tears. Frederick's health then suddenly started to improve and there were hopes that the diagnosis was wrong. But by January 1888 his health worsened and by February he needed a tracheotomy to be able to breathe properly. From then on Frederick was not able to speak anymore. After suffering for over a year with no definite diagnosis, the cancer was confirmed by an autonomous professor called Wilhelm Waldeyer on March 6, 1888, three days before Frederick became emperor. With the definite confirmation of Frederick's diagnosis, Mackenzie's treatment fell into doubt. Upon the news of the death of his father on March 9, 1888, Frederick traveled back to Berlin where the people were shocked by his pitiful appearance. Despite his condition, Frederick did his best to fulfill his obligations as emperor and was motivated to accomplish his desires. After being unable to walk for the last two months, Frederick III died on June 15, 1888, after a brief reign of 99 days, and with him, his dreams of a liberal German empire died as well. He was unable to bring much lasting change and was succeeded by his son, Wilhelm, who would become known as the last German emperor. Wilhelm shared none of his parents' liberal views and was called a complete Prussian by his mother, whom he banned from court after the death of his father, as he distrusted her British background. Frederick rests in the Kaiser Friedrich Mausoleum, which is attached to the Friedenskirche in Potsdam. His early death is considered a potential turning point in German history. It is debated whether or not he could have transformed the empire into a more liberal state and if his reign could have even prevented the outbreak of World War I and World War II.